Hey everyone and welcome to part one of this two-part series which looks at understanding the Pythagoras theorem. In part one of this resource we're going to look at the challenge of delivering the Pythagoras theorem to your learners, and what some of the sticking points are, question raising and that is getting your learners to begin to ask questions about the Pythagoras theorem and then we're going to look at exploring triangles and what this is going to do is set the learners up well for part two which is where we introduce the maths and then uh, looking at application. And we're hoping that these two resources will give you some stimulating ideas about things you can add into your current delivery around the Pythagoras theorem. One of the primary challenges for learners is understanding and grasping abstract mathematics. And what we mean by abstract is the formula itself, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that has no value in it. So it's really hard for a learner to bring any meaning to that. In contrast, concrete refers to things that learners can touch and feel. It's tactile things. They can move things around and see how it works and understand it. Now the research is pretty clear. Learners bring their concrete knowledge into the abstract. But if they're just left with the abstract by themselves, then what tends to happen is they can bring no meaning to it and they get lost because they have nothing to hang on to. So what we're going to do in this resource is look at ways of building some concrete understanding and then bringing that into the abstract. Question raising is about getting the learners' attention and getting them engaged in the task. Uh, I like to give learners questions or get them asking their own questions and then not really providing them with the answers and revisiting those questions again at the end of the session. So they really have to find their own solutions to these problems. The idea is that these problems are interesting and engaging. At the end of this resource, there's a question that I use quite frequently with learners that involves two cars traveling away from each other. I found that to be quite engaging. Uh, but in the meantime, often I just ask learners a simple question. You know, I might use the scenario of a race, for example. Uh, they're at point A and some learners are running down A Street and then they're going to run down B Street to get to the end. Uh, meanwhile, there's another person who uh, sees a shortcut or some such thing and decides to cut through as the crow flies and travels from point A to B on a diagonal. And the question is, you know, will this person beat the others and why? How much will they beat the others by? Um, you know, is C Street longer than B Street and A Street together or is it shorter? And what's the relationship between them? And these sorts of things. And the idea is you're just beginning to raise their awareness of these questions. Now, a really good way to kick off the Pythagoras theory is to hand out a piece of paper to the learners so they can get tactile, they can get hands on and have some sort of problem solving task. So I hand out an A4 sheet of paper and I ask learners to fold it into the largest square they can. You know, there's always lots of kind of uh, thinking about what a square is and so on. But what you really want is you want learners to make the identify the relationship between the equal sides of a square. So ideally, you want them to do something like this. And this is just a matter of pulling down that one side and making sure it's equal to that other side and in line with it. Often a tricky concept for many learners. And then is making that crease, which later on we're going to link to our hypotenuse. And here we can see that it's a square. Now if learners can understand that this is equal to one square, then they'll begin to grasp the idea of the Pythagoras theorem. And what you really want is learners to begin to realize that a square has equal sides. And so this is ideally how you'd want them to make the square, to fold the piece of paper until it's equal, and then get rid of the bit on the edge. Now this takes a bit of time for learners to work out, and often you get learners who are trying to fold uh, the piece of paper into a small square or a perfect square. And so a good question is uh, to hand out the paper and then ask them, you know, what is a way of testing whether that's a perfect square or not? How do we work that out? Now, once the learners have got this, uh, the next step is to fold it into a triangle. And from here, you can discuss what a right angle triangle is. You could also discuss the sides, the hypotenuse, the legs, and so on, and the fact that it's a right angle triangle. Now, learner engagement is essential 
And from my experience, the type of diagram that's on the screen at the moment just doesn't cut it. It's not exciting. It doesn't engage the learners in any deep thinking about the theorem at all. So what I've started to do is to use real pictures of real things. Spot the triangles. Often I show the learners a series of different uh, designs, interesting things that capture their attention, and I ask them to find the triangles. Now one approach I've taken in the last few years is to take these pictures or other pictures and to use a data projector to shine them up on the whiteboard and then have the learners use the whiteboard markers to trace over the triangles that they can see in these diagrams. For example, you can see that there's triangles in the apex of this roof, you know, there's triangles to do with the stairway and of course the supporting beams are all triangles as well. And so again, if we're mapping those out on the whiteboard, we can begin to see that they can actually be turned into right angled triangles. Now, something I tell uh, the engineering students is that as engineers, you know, the right angle triangle is their friend and it's really their job and their skill to be able to recognize right angle tri triangles wherever they look. And so I ask them to look at this picture and I say, you know, what do you notice? And by now, with the other pictures having really made the point, they should be beginning to see that there are triangles in this picture and they're different sizes and uh, you want them, want them to identify the hypotenuse and so on. And so they're beginning to recognize triangles. And again, just showing them more pictures that triangles are a part of design. They're a structural feature that creates strength and balance and they're everywhere. And the Pythagoras theorem is about using right angle triangles to your advantage. So just in summary, you know, one of the real challenges is making sure that learners have a concrete understanding of the Pythagoras theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared is abstract and really difficult to understand and apply if you don't have a model of what that means that you can apply to it. So it's about building that concrete understanding of the theorem. Second thing, question raising, making it interesting for learners. Uh, there's also some good stuff in the next clip about how to do that, but getting them asking their own questions about why the Pythagoras theorem might be useful. And third thing, exploring triangles. You know with the paper folding, the idea of that is that they begin to see relationships between squares and triangles and it's a good excuse to talk about the hypotenuse and the legs and so on. And finally, showing learners uh, a whole lot of pictures and getting them to find the triangles in those pictures where they can then begin to think about the usefulness of right angle triangles. Thanks for your time. Hope this was helpful.